Hundreds of new ideas for new machines are probably registered every day around the world. Are these machines the new electricity or better than a steam engine? And are they the best thing since sliced bread? We'll let you decide. From factories being run by robots to trailers that can create water from thin air or a massive drill named Bertha that could be drilling to the center of the earth right this minute. They say that necessity is the mother of invention and these machines are no exception. Here are 15 useful machines that are on another level. Careful, you need to know the company you're dealing with. Generally, if they're regulated, they're going to be fairly safe to deal with. You can also look at other... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy claw machine. How fun would having this job be? Your only responsibility is using a giant claw to move big ticket items like an entire bus. It's quite a display of power. Just watch how this giant claw man handles the school bus like it was a Tonka toy. But these claws are pretty typical in most large scale scrap metal operations and they make quick work processing all the scrap metal. The wrecking yard has all the big toys, but although the claw is capable of much destruction, these scrap yards actually recycle the scrap metal. Once the large items are reduced to smaller pieces, the metal is sold off, and then more fresh scrap is brought in to continue the cycle. The most common type of wreck yards are automobile wreck yards, but junk yards for motorcycles, bicycles, trucks, buses, heavy equipment, small airplanes, boats or trains also use these sort of giant claws to sort scrap or crush it into oblivion to help save on space. The parts dismantled from automobiles can be resold, such as headlights, seats, parts of the exhaust system, mirrors, hubcaps, whatever to turn a buck and put useful parts back into commission. But the most fun part of working at a wreck yard has to be operating the big claw. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Stretch the factory robot. Is this the future of factory workers? We think so, and soon Stretch the factory robot will soon be replacing humans in a factory environment. Its only function? Moving boxes, a job the robot does very well. Robot makers Boston Dynamics unveiled a new robot with just one application in mind, moving boxes in warehouses. The robot is called Stretch. It has a square movable base with wheels, cameras, and other sensors, and a robotic arm with seven degrees of freedom and a suction pad on the end that can grab and move boxes up to 50 pounds. Boston Dynamics made Stretch with a focus on mobility. Stretch is designed to easily integrate into an existing workplace where it can be useful loading or unloading goods. Useful robots in any workplace is still a significant challenge, and it requires a very difficult combination of sensing, intelligence, and dynamic motion. Stretch the factory robot has all of those features. It's fast and easy to deploy, easy to use, and adaptable to many tasks without costly changes. Boston Dynamics claims Stretch can move up to 800 cases in an hour, a rate that's comparable to that of a human and can operate for eight hours at a time before it needs to be recharged. <laughs> Curiosity Curiosity is a Mars rover designed to explore the Gale Crater on Mars as part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. It launched from Cape Canaveral in November 2011 and landed inside Gale Crater on Mars in August 2012. The rover's goal is to investigate Mars's climate and geology and assess whether the selected site has ever offered environmental conditions favorable for microbial life. Curiosity is studying Mars in preparation for human exploration. The Mars Science Laboratory and its rover centerpiece, Curiosity, is the most ambitious Mars mission yet flown by NASA. Curiosity is about the size of a small SUV, just over nine feet long by nine feet wide, about seven feet tall and weighs 2,000 pounds. Engineers designed the rover to roll over obstacles up to 25 inches high and to travel about 660 feet per day. After it celebrated 2,000 souls, that's Mars days on the planet, the rover made its way from Gale Crater to Mount Sharp, where it looked at geological information embedded in the mountain's layers. Curiosity found extensive evidence of a past water and geological change. Can humans survive up there? Studying the geology of Mars will help scientists better understand if the region near Curiosity's landing site could support lifelong terms. The SAM-100 this bricklaying robot builds walls six times faster than a human bricklayer. It's called SAM-100, and it's quite literally a semi-automated mason. Created by New York-based company Construction Robotics, SAM can lay 3,000 bricks per day using its combination of a conveyor belt, robotic arm, and concrete pump. 
A human builder will average around 500 bricks per day, so you do the math. Sam is a bricklaying master. At present, Sam's human partner is required to smooth over the concrete before the robot takes over. While many folks are concerned that robots like this will replace humans on construction sites, you can't deny the practicality of using Sam 100. Robots can do the back-breaking heavy lifting and leave people to do other jobs. Although it can be decades before construction sites are entirely manned by robots, the Sam 100 is changing the bricklaying game. But it's not cheap. Each robot costs a half million dollars. But think of the money it saves on labor. It's a potentially transformative tool in revolutionizing building sites. Sam 100 is already working on building sites around the United States. Skywater Weedu System Scientists and environmentalists have been trying to solve the problem of water shortages worldwide. The question remained, how can we pull H2O out of thin air? A team led by U.S. architect David Hertz did just that. The team actually figured out a way to pull water from the air. They created an energy-efficient technology for harvesting fresh water from thin air. <laughs> the Skywater Weedoo system, contained within a shipping container for easy transport, utilizes very basic principles. By combining cold and hot air to create condensation, the Skywater Weedoo system replicates the way clouds are formed. This process is called Atmospheric Water Generation, or AWG, a process where water is drawn out of thin air through condensation. The high-volume water generator can create water out of precipitation and can be used in any climate. Powered by wood chips and similar biomass, the Weedoo draws warm air from outside and sends it through a filter to remove impurities. Once inside the box, the Weedoo introduces the warm air to cold air inside. This produces condensation. The space-conscious and clever design can generate over 500 gallons of water per day. Weedoo stands for Wood to Energy Deployed Emergency Water. <laughs> Fugaku Fugaku, named after an alternative name for Mount Fiji, is a supercomputer at the Riken Center for Computational Science in Kobe, Japan. The logo for Fugaku depicts Mount Fiji, symbolizing Fugaku's high performance and a wide range of its users. It's the fastest computer in the world. The supercomputer has again taken the top spot on the major high-performance computer rankings, reflecting the groundbreaking performance that Fugaku exhibits over the wide range of real applications. In the future, the IT developed for Fugaku will come into widespread use around the world in a broader range of infrastructure, including cloud applications, contributing to the solution of global problems and leading innovation in Japan. The supercomputer is breaking ground in areas such as drug discovery, personalized and preventative medicine. Fugaku can also process simulations of natural disasters, weather and climate forecasting. On top of that, the computer is a whiz at energy creation, storage and the development of clean energy, new material development, new design and production processes, you name it, Fugaku has you covered. The new supercomputer is scheduled to begin full operation this year. The Interceptor You might eventually see these boats cruising down your city's waterways. This is the garbage removal of the future. The Interceptor is a Dutch-made device that traps trash to prevent it from washing out into the ocean. The Interceptor prototype has been on a trial run in this drain, which connects the city's notoriously garbage-laden Anki River in the Java Sea, shipped to Jakarta by its inventor, the Netherlands-based nonprofit organization The Ocean Cleanup. Experts estimate that these waterways are responsible for carrying 80% of ocean trash out to sea. That's a lot of trash to handle, but the Interceptor does a fine job. It's powered by solar panels on top of it. At water level, a long waste barrier extends upstream. The force of the current pushes trash towards the Interceptor's mouth. A conveyor belt lifts trash out and deposits it into a platform that shuttles trash to dumpsters. Once the containers are full, they're taken to shore to be emptied. The Interceptor design can extract 110,000 pounds of plastic per day and can hold 1,770 cubic feet of garbage. The Interceptor is the first generation of its kind. Ocean Cleanup aims to deploy in 1,000 of the world's most polluted rivers in just five years. <laughs> Sarcos Guardian XO The Guardian XO by Sarcos is a full-body powered industrial exoskeleton kind of like the ones soldiers wore in the film Avatar. And this battery-powered wearable robot system that can safely lift up to 200 pounds with minimal effort by the soldier. The sole purpose of these exoskeletons is to boost military performance rather than replace soldiers. The Sarko system works in unison with the soldier's intelligence, instinct, and judgment, which amps it up with the strength, endurance, and precision of machines. 
The U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency started working on this idea 20 years ago. Sarcos Robotics unveiled the latest version of its Guardian Exo Industrial Exoskeleton, and the results are so next level. The 150-pound weight of the suit bypasses its user and is transferred directly into the ground. So although it looks hard to wear, the weight of the system isn't something that the user experiences directly. Sarcos Guardian XO is fully electric with swappable battery packs and can keep it going all day long. And not only that, it takes seconds to put on and take off. But this kind of technology comes at a cost. One Guardian XO costs $100,000 per year to rent the humanoid robot that uses a real human as its command and control system. <laughs> Da Vinci Surgical System The Da Vinci Surgical System is a robotic surgical system made by the American company Intuitive Surgical. It was approved by the Food and Drug Administration just over 20 years ago. Designed to facilitate surgery using a minimally invasive approach, the Da Vinci Surgical System is controlled by a surgeon remotely from a console. According to the manufacturer, the Da Vinci System is called Da Vinci in part because Leonardo da Vinci's study of human anatomy eventually led to the design of the first known robot in history. The surgeon's console is typically in the same room as the patient, with three to four interactive robotic arms that hold objects and can also act as scalpels or scissors. The final arm controls the 3D cameras. The surgeon uses the controls to maneuver the cart's robotic arms. It's completely dependent on human involvement, however, and doesn't perform surgery without the guidance and precision of a trained professional. From hysterectomies to removing prostates, the Da Vinci system has taken surgery into the future. Could you handle being operated on by a robot? Believe it or not, over 5 million people have had the Da Vinci surgical system perform their surgeries. John Deere's Autonomous Electric Tractor Farming technology has taken yet another turn in the right direction. Changes in weather are not the only challenges farmers face, so John Deere created this to help solve multiple challenges, their version of an autonomous electric tractor. John Deere revealed their new autonomous concept in Valencia, Spain, and farmers worldwide showed immediate interest. The focus of automation is not to replace the operator, it's about using technology to create the best operator possible with hands-free satellite guidance to steer the machine. The cableless tractor will have a rated power output of approximately 680 horsepower and described it as being zero emissions. Thanks to the electric drive, there are no operating emissions and noise levels are minimal. The tractor can be equipped with either wheels or tracks, depending on what your farming needs are. They will be able to replace manned tractors, as most accidents in agriculture are due to human error. Maybe the future of farming using autonomous vehicles will be safer than manned vehicles. John Deere seems to think so. Hmm. Narwhal Self-Cleaning Robot This self-cleaning wonder is on another level. This new mop and vacuum robot features innovative self-cleaning technology. And who couldn't use a hand keeping our homes as clean as possible? And for 550 bucks, it can be yours. The Narwhal T10 robot has the capacity to clean up to 2,150 square feet of space in three hours. Narwhal's smart sensors and navigation technology automatically sweeps and then mops everything from laminate floors, linoleum, tile, hardwood too, using a combination of speed and pressure to lift up dirt and scrub stains. The robot automatically returns to its base station when it's done, where these mops are sprayed and cleaned by a built-in pump and scraped against a washboard to remove captured dirt. The two-tank system separates fresh and used water. Easy as that. And the Narwhal app will help you map your space's layout. Narwhal can learn the environment and figure out an optimized cleaning routine. The groundbreaking self-cleaning technology signals the start of a new era of fully automatic robot cleaners. You can enjoy a truly hands-free floor cleaning experience with the Narwhal self-cleaning robot. Spot the robot dog. Use of robots to collect data and perform hazardous tasks is very much a reality. And why not turn man's best friend, the dog, into a robot named Spot? The machine's animal-like behavior regularly electrifies crowds at tech conferences, and like other Boston Dynamic robots, Spot is an internet sensation. The agile, mobile robot navigates terrain with unprecedented mobility, allowing you to program routine inspection tasks and data capture safely accurately and frequently. Spot the Robot Dog can be used for surveying and data collection while helping reduce the number of workers on site. It will be integrated with data collection sensors and field control software to automate repetitive tasks such as site scans. 
surveying and progress monitoring in potentially unsafe environments. The price for the Spot Explorer? $74,500. The initial sale, described as an early adopter program, is targeting businesses and finding customers in select industries so they can deploy spots in real-world scenarios. Although it's nothing like a real pooch, however, Spot can walk, trot, avoid obstacles, climb stairs, and much more. The legs are powered by 12 custom motors with a top speed of 3 feet per second. The robot can operate for 90 minutes on a single charge, too. <laughs> Big Bertha Tunnel Boring Machine This giant digger was tasked with building a tunnel large enough to carry four lanes of motor traffic underneath Seattle. Named after the city's first woman mayor, Bertha is a soft rock tunnel boring machine. Soft rock TBMs need to move sand, which can mess up machinery like rock does, as well as gravel and clay. It made a 1.7 mile journey under the skyscrapers of the port city. More than 150 feet below the streets of Seattle, Bertha bored a 57 and a half foot diameter tunnel underneath the city. It's the largest tunnel boring machine in the world. Bertha weighs 6,700 tons and stretches 326 feet long and has plowed through more than 7,000 feet of rock, mud, sand, earth, clay, water, and pretty much anything else in its way. Workers still need to get down into Bertha frequently to check each of the 700 cutter tools. They scrape away rock and mud as the 2,000-ton cutter heads rotate at one revolution per minute. But Bertha does get stuck, and operations of this size are not without major snags. Bertha was designed and manufactured in Osaka, Japan, and is the world's largest earth pressure balanced tunnel boring machine at a cost of $80 million. <laughs> SpaceX's Falcon X Falcon X is a partially reusable launch vehicle designed and manufactured by SpaceX, powered by SpaceX Merlin engines using cryogenic liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene as propellants. Its name is derived from the fictional Star Wars spacecraft, the Millennium Falcon, and the nine Merlin engines. SpaceX launched four astronauts into orbit from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. They were headed to the International Space Station the first time they reused a capsule and rocket to launch astronauts. As Crew 2 disappeared over the horizon, the landing plume of the returning first stage of Falcon 9 is seen falling towards the Atlantic Ocean and they can be reused for future missions. Rockets from the Falcon 9 family have been launched 117 times over 11 years, resulting in 115 full mission successes. Falcon 9 is a reusable, two-stage rocket designed for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. The world's first orbital class reusable rocket. Reusability allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, keeping costs low and being able to reuse rockets will change the future of flying into outer space. The Large Hadron Collider The Large Hadron Collider is the most powerful particle accelerator ever built. The accelerator sits in a tunnel 200 feet underground at the European Organization for Nuclear Research near Geneva, Switzerland. This particular accelerator pushes protons or ions to near the speed of light. It consists of a huge ring of superconducting magnets with a number of accelerating structures that boost the energy of the particles along the way. The Large Hadron Collider is the last element of this chain in which the beams reach their highest energies. The LHC first went live in 2008. Scientists successfully fired the protons around the tunnel in stages, three kilometers at a time. The particles were fired in a clockwise direction into the accelerator and successfully steered around in at 1028 local time. The LHC successfully completed its major test. After a series of trial runs, two white dots flashed on a computer screen showing the protons traveled the full length of the collider. It took less than one hour to guide the stream of particles around its inaugural circuit. The Large Hadron Collider gained considerable attention from outside the scientific community and inspired works of fiction including novels, TV, video games, and films.